I want to bring up something. I, I saw a report. Um, I fundamentally believe that Harden and Kevin Durant work great together and they could win a championship with a good bench. I, I think what the Suns have been able to do because of Cameron Payne is play Chris 31 minutes. And it's a really healthy, energized Chris Paul at the end of games. Um, you know, you're getting into a situation when you have no bench and the Warriors ran into this, you know, you're just playing your starters 40 plus minutes in these grueling series. And I think Harden, Durant and a steady, strong bench where Kevin can play 33, Harden 34, that's a championship team to me, especially coming out of the East. And I got to tell you, when I saw the Kyrie Irving trade rumor or talk, I thought, that's the guy that worries me. He's erratic. He's erratic physically. He can be erratic emotionally. You know, I always joke, if any of your friends said the earth is flat, you'd be just done calling them. Mm -hmm. it, I, I know it was a joke, but there's part of me that thinks it's sort of Kyrie. He's kind of out there. And I, I don't know. There, there's always a taker for somebody of his skill level, but I did kind of buy into it. The, I Part of that, I read that and I thought, God, we saw Harden really grew this year. His distribution was terrific. I thought he was really, I mean, I was always, you know, I knew he was a great offensive player, Chris, but I always kind of, I thought he was too ball centric. He looked worn down in the playoffs, hard to play with, didn't give you much of an effort on the defensive end. And then I watched this year and I'm like, no, I'm in. I like him. I think the Kyrie Irving rumors I think there's got to be something to it. it. It does make a little sense, right? Well, regardless of it makes sense, it is absolutely not going to happen. Like for, but for the first thing I thought of when I saw those rumors pop was the incredibly uncomfortable conversation Sean Mark's going to have to have with Kyrie because every, every GM, like and I've had these phone calls with GMs after I've written something about, you know, a trade talk that was taking place. Like, Dude, now I got to call this guy and tell him we're not doing it and say, like, we still love you. This is just media being media. Don't worry about it. Put it out of your mind. So I, I would imagine Sean Marks had to have that conversation uh, with Kyrie Irving. Uh, even if you believe that, like you're saying, that Kyrie, you, you, a package that you get back of players for Kyrie makes you a better team overall. Nobody's going to require Kyrie Irving. Like, Kyrie, unless Kyrie comes out and says, I want to be a team X. Nobody's going to trade for him. We, we saw what happens in those situations when Kyrie's unhappy. It's called the Boston Celtics of 2018-19. Nobody's bringing that guy in if he doesn't want to be there because he's going to let it be known that he doesn't want to be there. It, it's going to bleed out one way or the other. And if you're trying to build something, uh, you can't. I don't think you can bring in a player that's not all in on your particular situation. And I, I can't imagine Kyrie, who, who as much as anything, wanted control of his future. That's why, you know, when he went to Brooklyn, it was the first time he's ever really made a decision for himself. Wanted to do that. I can't imagine him being satisfied with being traded like New Orleans or, you know, wherever you might be able to get that package of players back in return that would give you the fleshed out team that you're talking about. I, I just, it, to me, it, it's highly improbable that something like that uh, could ever come to fruition for that reason. That's amazing that a top five finisher in the league is so toxic. He's untradeable. I don't even remember anything. I mean, because, I mean, again, we don't have, there, there's nothing, there's no crime committed. It's just, I mean, you know, I mean, Kyrie's flaky. He's a little too erratic for me. I could never build around him, but that's amazing. So your, your takeaway is he is just off limits. Nobody, because I look at Miami and I think, they need size. Could they go bam out of Bayou? They're done with Tyler Hero. Put him off the bench for Kyrie. Like I think, oh, that that works. And you're you to use zero chance. Well, you, you would have to it have to be a discussion with Kyrie Irving. You would have to have like if it's Miami, if it's a, a Miami, you would have to go to him and say, look, Miami's made as an offer. We think it makes our team better. But do you want to go there? Like, do you want to play there? Because Miami's, believe me, Miami, God, Miami would have zero tolerance for any Kyrie antics. Like, that's a, a zero tolerance a team as they get. Um, you'd have to, it'd have to be in consultation with Kyrie Irving. And I, I can't think of too many teams that he would want to go to at this point. He signed with Brooklyn because of its, it's near his hometown. And he wants to play with Kevin Durant. Like, they are, they remain very close friends. So 
I, I just I just can't envision a scenario where the Nets just see something they like, get the other team to make a deal, which I, is I think more difficult to to come together, and just unilaterally deal Kyrie. Colin Kyrie, you've covered him. Kyrie would strike me as the kind of guy who'd be like, you know what, I retire. Like, yeah, that's what he kind of he might like. It might be like, I'm I'm done. Um, I I don't need basketball. I'm going to go, you know do whatever it is I do when I disappear off the map, you know, and go travel the world and do stuff like that. That's the kind of guy he might, he might turn out being at that point. So it's, it's just, to me, there are too many issues to un- unravel before you could do a deal like that. By the way, the Bradley Beal stuff is interesting because they, I think they have, they are like Portland. They got to rebuild. It doesn't work. Start over. I think you can get a haul for Beal. I know LeBron, Maverick Carter, LeBron, those guys, they have been in on Bradley Beal for three and four years. Mm-hmm. They thought, you know, I know those LeBron, I was told, thought Beal was saddled with John Wall, thought John was too immature, inconsistent. Um, Beal, you think they're, they're going to be a fairly vibrant market for him? I'd, I would oh, love Bradley Beal. Very, very strong market for Bradley Beal. But he's also in a situation where you, if you trade for him, you got to know he wants to be there because you're only getting the last year of that contract and you don't want to give up a right. major asset that you're going to have to give up to go and get him. That's why to kind of circle it back, I, I think Boston's a player for Bradley Beal too. I mean, the Bradley Beal, Jason Tatum relationship, people know it, but it's rock solid. These two grew up in the St. Louis area. They have been best friends yeah. for a long time, played their first all-star game together this past year. They couldn't have been more excited. And believe you me, when they're both over in Tokyo, that conversation is going to take place about playing together, right. finding a way. You know, we've seen stuff like that happen before with the super friends of Miami and the 08 Olympics and, you know, Kyrie and Kevin Durant in the hallway. Like this, this stuff, this stuff happens when these guys are, are away. So if you're Boston and I look, Boston's not looking to trade Jalen Brown, but Boston, it's like a straight swap Jalen Brown for Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal will be just be 28 next season. So it fits into that window that yep. Tatum is, is currently in. They, they do complement each other. Beal, a score from the yep. perimeter. You know, Bra- Tatum, a 3-4. So you're, you, you're not taking a step back by any stretch. And you would know more likely than not that Beal would want to be there because he wants to play with Tatum, who signed for the long term. That, that, to me, is one of the more likely places. That Boston and Philadelphia, you know, because Brown, under contract for a few more years. Ben Simmons, under contract for a few more years. Two teams in contention that Bradley Beal might gravitate towards. He's been an East Coast guy for some time now. Uh, those are the two teams I think are the favorites right now. If if Bradley Beal goes to, uh, and all he has to do is go to the Wizard and say, I'm not going to sign that extension. That has the That's same right. power. Same power as ask for a trade. That's why when guys don't do that, it drives me wild. Like, why don't you just, just say I'm not going to sign the extension? Like, you get to be the good guy and you don't, uh, and you get what you want anyway. So once he does that, it's game on for Bradley Beal. 